Picking your last call. <laughs> okay, so uh, like I said, for those of you who are new, and then uh, even those who have been here, we said this is a project that we are actually undertaking. As a senior member, if you are in a system and then you realize that uh, there is a problem that you can use your resources to fix, that's what you do. So I am my co-founder, uh, Dominic. We are actually trying to fix a particular problem, and that has to do with research, uh, uh, thesis writing, publication, and all those things. Uh, we realized there are a lot of it, computerized aided applications that you could use uh, to get things done. Apart from that, the knowledge in how we handle the thing itself, like we have been using a lot of the things that have been turned out as thesis. In actual fact, they don't communicate anything, they miscommunicate. Uh, we've all gone through those things before. We know a little bit of honesty will tell you that well, there's a lot of work that we could do at those areas. So that is what we're doing. So we launched this, uh, what we call, project that we are calling NDGO. Simply means that no garbage in, no garbage out. So in your project work, if you don't actually put garbage inside, you're surely going to get a farm work. You're not going to come out with what garbage out. So the NGIGO is, is, is a project that we are actually undertaking. We're going to have it in two forms. These are the lecture forms. And then we have the unscripted part. And this is the unscripted sessions. Um, the unscripted sessions is a classroom one where we record it like a podcast. And then the core group are the people that meet and then we work around it. Uh, we started uh, this project not now. Beginning of last semester, we did a pilot using other group of people, and we know the results. So that's why we are switching. Okay, we're switching, and then we started with switching. We're not recording because we wanted to see how things were going to work, and we realized that this is the right group of people that we can use to do. So at least we know that every day we have Inas, we have Raja, uh, Raj, we have uh, what do you call it, Adam and Rex. They are the four groups. The people blessing. that have become blessing core. Has blessing has become <laughs> core. Let's see how long she will stay. Uh, why I'm not giving Blessing the credit is because uh, Esther was here. She was very constant, but for some reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you are Jennifer and Della. Okay. So you tell us your the school of. Uh, your school of designation, uh, where you are, and stuff. It's very important because we use their background sometimes to make examples. UDS. UDS. Which course? Right. Computer science. Computer science. Oh, so Inas is your classmate. Oh, he's your senior. Okay. And then, uh, the last. Tech. Tech. Uh, what did you do? You did economics. Oh, okay. But I don't know that. <laughs> Another thing too is we try to bring ideas together. Yeah. So computer science, we may not be you not know, inclined in that area. Yeah. Something you have that we do not know, you know, come and teach us. Everybody is a teacher here. Yeah. So those who started this class and thought we were coming to this, they ended up being founders of the class. Uh, you know, it's exposure. So when you get exposed to something. Uh, surely, you uh, Romeo is not here because he's in a meeting. There. Normally, he fixes some of the things. In fact, the logo you are good. seeing here is, is done by a student. That's that's Romeo. Romeo. Yeah, Romeo did the logo. <laughs> yeah, we just share the idea. He does. He tried to put the ideas together. We reject. We are separated. And today, I I lost. Uh, what do you call it? Two two against one. So this is the official logo of. 
the project that we're going to use that. So it's and you go no garbage in, no garbage out. Okay. Alright, so that brings us to the start of what we want to do today. I am tempted to switch what I wanted to do today because I'm seeing fresh faces and whether it will be ideal for us to do what we want to do. Uh, that is what I'm contemplating. So, uh, again, because yesterday's class didn't really work the way I wanted it to, um, maybe then just repeat what we did with the like it skills and then we'll see how the video goes. Because I've wanted us to jump out of SL for today and do something else. But if you don't have those basic manipulation skills in SL, where we are going will be a bit dangerous for you. So, what does the house say on that? Let's try and do a recap. We try and do a recap. Yeah. We try and do a recap of what But using different type of data, not necessarily the same type of data. Is that, is that okay with everybody? Okay, good. Right, so um, on that note, you start today's class. So we're doing a recap. Um, that will mean that um, I will need to have, uh, what do you call it, you come along with me. This is the unscripted version of the Angigo series, lecture series that we have. Uh, today we're going to go back and then try and do categorical outcomes. Uh, we explain categorical outcomes to be the type of variables or data where there is a fixed finite position for the responses to be. So categorical variables are variables that give you fixed positions. So what is your gender? You are either a male or a female. Or nowadays you can be a hermaphrodite or a transgender. But whichever that you find yourself you are in a fixed position so that is a category that you belong to so that's why we're calling them categorical outcomes unlike continuous variable what's your age there are no fixed positions for age so with age it continues we have somebody that is just a second old all the way down to Methuselah and depending on what you are using age for, it can go 2,000 and 3,000 and 4,000 and 5,000. And then within it, there is an infinite position. Anybody can occupy anything at all. Your height becomes in various sizes, various, uh, what do you call it, heights um, when it comes to weight. So those are continuous variables. But if I ask you what did you eat, and since you are in hope, it's either you have eaten Kenke, Banku, Wache, Wokplan, Abobitaji, what else? Abolo. Abolo, yes. It, it, they are fixed positions that you belong. So those are categorical what, variables. Now, so we are dealing with categorical variables for now. And we say that with categorical variables, they don't have certain operative attributes or properties. So with categorical variables, you cannot do divisive and multiplicative uh, operations on them. So you cannot say that one male divided by two female will give you <laughs> maybe three children or something. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Okay, right. But we can divide somebody's age. You can add up ages and find an average H. Okay? Yeah. So those ones have those operative attributes, but with the categorical outcome, they don't have those attributes. Then we came to the fact that even with the categorical outcomes, you can have them in different forms. Then we said they are the normal, nominal ones or the added. So we say the added one in that particular categorical outcome the rank makes a meaning. So, for example, we ask of education, the background of people, educational level. Somebody has a basic education. That's one category. Another person had uh, secondary education. That is another category. Another person had tertiary education. That is also another category. But between the basic 
secondary and tertiary. There's a rank <laughs> where the tertiary person has a higher education than the second. And then the secondary person had a higher education than the what than the test. So this is a rank what data. Even though they are categories, you belong to one of the categories, but there's a rank data. So these are ordered variables. So we are talking about a certain disease and we are interested in how the disease is affecting somebody. So we talk about severity. Oh, this is moderate. This is severe. I get it. Low. So when you use those words. It means that low has a smaller intensity, followed by moderate, and then severe has a higher intensity. So that is the ordered variable sessions. So in research, sometimes we ask certain questions, and the response that we give to people to answer, we put those response in terms of magnitude. We put those response in terms of magnitude. So we ask certain questions and then we expect that the person will answer the question based on the magnitude, how he feel, his perception, the magnitude with which he either agreed to the thing, disagree. So when you have some of these questions, like the questionnaire that we have here, the response have been put into what we call the liquid scales. So the liquid skills are skills that measure in terms of what? Magnitude. Never. Sometimes. Always. You realize those things are what? In terms of what? Magnitude. The frequency. Very often. Often. Real. So you see those are magnitudes. So for example, the one we have here now, we are asking questions. Uh, this is a domestic questionnaire though. Um, this is one of the questionnaires that we use to do one of our quality management service. Uh, this is the midterm quality assessment survey that we call the student experience survey. So in a set of questions and the responses you are expecting from the person you expect the person to give it in terms of what magnitude. So we realize this is a five-point Leckett scale. So in a five-point Leckett scale, you have five answers, and the answers are arranged in terms of what magnitude. So if you look on your questionnaire, you realize that SA means strongly agree, A means agree, TS through sometimes. D, disagree. SD, strongly disagree. Right. So, what we're saying is that if you look at this is SA, that is representing strongly agree. The follow one, that is the A, strongly, uh, that is agree. And then if you have the T is representing through sometimes. D means disagree. And then SD, strongly agree. So you realize these are in terms of what? Magnitude. From strongly disagree to strongly agree. So this is a Leckett scale. A five-point Leckett scale. Now, if you look at the questions that are there, as you have them, realize question one is accent. I rarely found information about you has and its schools before enrolling for the first time and the responses that a person have is what we just described whether the person strongly agrees whether the person agrees to this whether the person think it was true sometimes whether it disagrees or whether the person strongly what disagreed so these are Five point like it skills, and the questions flow like that. The questions flows like that. Now we are dealing with least like it skill because most people have been getting it wrong. What they do is that because it's an added uh, questionnaires, the responses are added. They would like to assign numbers for them. So most often than not, the numbers are in terms of magnitude. 
So we can say that wherever you see strongly disagree, it scores one. Whenever you see disagree, it scores two. Whenever you see true sometimes, you score that three, you put three there. Whenever you see agree, you put four there. Whenever you see strongly agree, you put what? Five. So this response has now been coded into figures. By natural fact, the figures in themselves are just representing categories. They are still categorical outcomes. So if you take question one, depending on the number of students that are answering, let's say 10 students, somebody takes agree. That means that person belongs to the category that believes that he was finding information readily on you has before he what he enrolled. If another person disagrees, means that person belongs to the category of people who did not found what information on you has readily before they what they enrolled. So that is what this whole thing is about. So the data sheet you have contains the responses of these particular individuals. So you realize that the responses have been entered just as they are. So if you take this particular person, we have numbered them. So this particular person, that is the response for question one. So you realize we put question one here. That is the person's response for question what? Question two. So for this particular person, he agrees that he actually what found information about you has handy before enrolling. And then the second question also, the person agrees. But if you come to the second respondent, that person also strongly agree for the first question, the second one, and then the third one, he said it was is true sometimes. Then he then goes on to what? To agree. And then what? Agree for the next one. Now, if you come to the third person, the third person belongs to the category of people who did not think that information came handy. So that person says that he disagree. That information about you has was what? Was available. Then you move on to the next one. He says it was just true sometimes. Then you move on to the next question. This time where the person was strongly disagrees. He strongly disagree. So if you want to go through the questions for our virtual audience, for the sake of our virtual audience, the first question we've read already. We're not reading again. So reading the second question. That is, when I first started at UHAS, the orientation week for new students was helpful for me. So somebody thinks the orientation week was helpful. Another person thinks that it was not helpful enough. Then you come to the third question. There is sufficient opportunity at you has to get advice on my studies. Somebody says he gets, another person says he doesn't get. And you realize these are students that are coming from different backgrounds. So it may be true for a certain group of people. It may not be true for others. Right. If you look at the fourth question, he said that procedure for enrolling in courses are simple and what? Efficient. So you have varied responses. So what we are doing now is we have these responses as has been put here. The responses are in a five point like it's here. So if you realize, if you put your cursor on this one like this, if you click on any of these seats, what happens with that with SL, straight away the count is done. So you can see that it contains 100 and what, 25. Uh, if you take the header, which is the question, uh, the question one out of it, it means we are having about 124 respondents. Now, these respondents that we are having, if you look at this side, you have different courses. If you look at the the D, they are coming from different courses. So if you scroll the D down, you realize you are having MD, MD, MID, MID. The MIDs are actually for medical free students. Then the NS. RS is for yes. nursing students. Uh, as you move along, you find other students down there. Um, you have PA students, that is for physician assistants. As you move along, um, you have PH, that is those who are coming from what? Public health. And then as you move down, 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 down. Uh, I think the only thing left, we have dietetic students for DT. 
and then if you move down, you have middle lab students. Yeah. So they are made up of different category of what of students coming from different schools. Right. So now we have these particular responses. Now the question is how do we how do we analyze this data? Now the first rule for analyzing and attempting to analyze any data is that you do not work on the original sheet. So this is what you do. If you come to this side, you realize there's an arrow here. You click on this arrow, the arrow at this side, it selects the whole sheet. Then you copy. You can just copy this sheet. And then you click on the plus sign down here, depending on your, uh, what do you call it, version though. But I think most of the version you are using have the plus sign there. You just click on that, and then it opens a new sheet for you. So what you do is that you just paste it from this, and you have a duplicate of your of of your data. So what you now do is that in order not to confuse yourself, because best of the same feathers normally confuse their owner. Yes. Yes. So what you do is that you rename this one. So to rename, you just put it on the sheet two. Right click on it. Yeah, and then you come to rename. But we in this core group, we have a common name for such, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, so a common name for that is res trash. Res trash. Yeah, so anytime we name rest trash we know that is our working our working sheet yeah so you can put anything on that so we can do all the manipulations on the working sheet if anything goes wrong we know we have the original sheet to come back to it and then sort it out that is the whole idea uh these little rules may save you a day or your lifetime so don't overrule them yeah we are working with pc and things can go wrong so that is the rule that you need to always try and abide by. Now, let's look at the questionnaire itself. You can see that the questionnaire, as we have, it have certain communications that it's bringing. Certain questions are meant to present a certain particular idea. For example, if you look at the question one, the question one is about information before you what you enroll. If you look at the question two, that is when you first enrolled, question three, two, when you first enrolled, question four, when you first enrolled. Now, all of these can be grouped into one domain. In actual fact, they are trying to assess a freshman's experience. That is when a person first entered the school. What was the person's experience? So question one, two, three, four are in one domain, which we can say Freshman's what experience? So, was the school visible when he came here? What about the orientation week? What about opportunities for counseling on the courses? What about enrolling in courses? How does a freshman, uh, what do you call it, think about it? So, this is one domain. Now, if you look at the next ones that are coming, you can also find that they are also looking at certain domain, if you really want to put them together. You can realize that classrooms, the second one, the fifth question is about classrooms. So as you can see, classrooms and laboratories, uh, are they attractive and comfortable? So student computing facilities, are they sufficient for the need? The library staff are helpful when, uh, what do you call it, I need assistance. I am satisfied with the quality and then extent of materials available for me in the library. The library is open at convenient time. So we realize that seven down to eight is about library facility. Uh, if you look at the ones at the other side, computing facility and classroom. So these are infrastructure. So you can put them into those domains and then we'll work around with them. So adequate facility are available for extracurricular activity. I think that stands alone. Okay. 
then most of the faculty, so now moving into faculty, most of the faculty, so you can group them into that particular domain and then assess them. So we'll pick the first domain. The first domain is made up of question one and then what? Four. So we'll focus our attention on the first domain and then try question one to four, rather, not one and four. We'll try and then see how we can work with that for that particular domain. Then later we'll work around it. Right. So let's go back to our, um, our answer sheet, uh, our data sheet, and then try to work around with it and see. So if you come to the data sheet and you come to rest trash, which is a working data sheet, uh, is rest, are you yourself, are you on the trash now? <laughs> You're on the trash. So we can we can we can move on. We can move on. Do we have permission to move on your trash? Okay, all right. The permission is granted to move on the trash. Right. So we are interested in question one, two, and three, and then what? Four. These questions. Right. There are two ways you can deal with it. You can choose to work within this particular sheet. Or if you want, you could take those questions out there and then go and work on them. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, since most of us are beginners, uh, I am the beginner of beginners. So we're going to copy this and send it out there. we we'll work on it and then we'll come back. So there are two ways you can do that. You can just click on this one, hold, drag it all the way down here. And you are sure you have selected everything. So if you move down, you are sure you have selected everything and beyond. Um, please add up the numbers and then the courses. They are important. Not just copy the questions. Every time you are questioning questions or sorting out part of data and sending it away, make sure that the codes are following it. We've talked about code here in the class. One of the most important things on the questionnaire or any instrument is that every particular responder should have a unique word code. So you see this one, they have been numbered. That is the code. The codes are numbers. So the code as well as the courses will follow. There are several ways you can copy this. You can also click on the C and then hold your shifts and come and click on the on the fill for and then select all for you. If it happened that we wanted to copy certain part of the question, not necessarily all of them. Let's say we wanted question one, question three, and then let's say question five. We could copy that one also in between and leaving the ones that. All that we need to do is to just click on the questions that we want, the first one, then hold your control. Then you move on to the next one. You just click on this one. You see, it left the one in the middle that is question two in the middle so you can move and select any other question that you want so you can be jumping through the the columns you don't necessarily need to select all of them so if you want to select all of them that one you do what shifts you hold down the shift and then you click the last one you want to select but if you want to select in between then it is rather the control that you use yeah, these little operations may it's help you sometimes. It's also applicable in Word too. So you can do that to Word. That's you heard from the the librarian. He knows what words are. Right. So we copied this one. Okay. Uh, I'll use Control C to copy. Yeah, I use Control C to copy. Then I go on to a sub sheet again. So this one, I just come here. And I paste. So I have only that data here. It makes it easier and cleaner for me to work with. Hello? Hi. Right. So now let's try and deal with this particular part of the questionnaire 49. So what we're going to do is that we're going to transform this response into number codes. Okay? We're going to transform this response into number codes. So what we're going to do is that we're saying that wherever we see strongly agree, it is the biggest of them, we'll replace it with what? Five. When we see agree, we we'll replace it with what? Four. While we see through sometime, we we'll replace it with three. Whenever we see disagree, we we'll replace it with what? Two. Wherever we see 
strongly disagree, we will put work. Now, when you are in Excel, it's very easy for you to do those transformations using your find and will replace. Yeah, the find and replace is what you see at this place where there are two binoculars. This is the find and replace where you can get a find and replace. Now, so all that you need to do is just click on that. And when it comes to this place, you select replace. You select replace. So you realize it is written find what replace with. So whatever you want to find, you put it there. And whatever you want to replace it with, we put it at the down there. Now, the only caution here is that when some numbers have doubles, like for example, we are having here, you have A for agree, but you have SA for strongly agree. Now, if you go to replace the A first, it means that wherever you see A, it will replace it. So it means the A in front of the S will be replaced. Let me just show you. For example, if I come here and I say wherever you see A, replace it with let's say 4. So I put the A here. Wherever I see A, replace it with 4. So it means that if I click replace all, what is happening is that every A that I see, it's replaced. So you realize that we are having now S4. Yeah, sometimes this can mess up your data for you and you don't even know what is there. So in replacing, be a little bit cautious. So you can replace the double figures first. Sometimes even if it is not uh, what you call ideal for you to replace something, you can transform something into another thing and later replace it into it. The only thing is that make sure that you have always written down so that you don't come back to be asking yourself, which one did I replace with this or which one that? So this one that we are talking about that we are replacing uh, essay with five, it should be written down. So normally when you are doing analysis, you should have a book alongside with you. The tendency is to have a sheet. The next time you come, you won't find a sheet anywhere. So we always say that find a book that have life. A book are in You know? <laughs> yes. Find a book that have life in it. No? So a book that you know, you can easily find it. Uh, yeah. If you want those ones, full caps with the, the back hat, that's fine. Yeah, so anytime you go and take it as your analysis book, you can trace anything there. Any note you need to do, you do it. Because normally when you're doing analysis, it is not a one-state thing. You can be doing analysis for more than a month. Or do analysis on something. For example, if you are publishing something, send it over. And then two, three, four months later, there is a review and you need to change something inside. And you are going back for the same data. And when you go, you have replaced certain things, you have done certain things, and you are not thinking. This one, crap, what was that mean? It doesn't work like that. So anytime you are doing analysis, if you have a book that have life, you put the date there, all other things you do is there. So the next time you come and you open something, you know that, oh, I tried this classification where they did this one and this, I did this one means that, like that. So always find a hard copy book that you can always do your analysis inside. Okay, so let's go back to our find and replace. Uh, this little tips can save your life. Okay, all right. So, SA, we will replace SA first. And this one, we don't need to replace each of the columns one after the other because in all the columns, they contain the same variables. So we can just do one. Now, if I click on replace, it will be replacing only one. But if I click on replace or replace all on a sheet, so I just click on replace all and replace all on a sheet. Then I move on to the next next one. That is this time round. I can confidently do my A. It is not case sensitive. Uh, I've made a mistake. I didn't change the the five parts. Yeah, yeah. SA is supposed to be five. So I'm just going back for that. So SA is supposed to be five. So replacing SA with five. Yeah. Then we come back to the next one, that is A. We're replacing A with 4. So we just do that. Then the next one that we have is TS. Yeah. Replacing A with 4. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll fix it when we finish. Uh, the good thing you can do is just ignore it like this. Just do it this way. 
Yeah, don't 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 take that one. Yeah, hello. You've realized that you've realized that when you come down like this, there is med lab that contains A. So that one will also be replaced. So what we do is that just leave the names out. Just pick on only the the what do you call you pick on the questions and leave that one. That will that will work. So essay Yeah, because it will replace the metal lab and you don't want your metal lab to be spelled at metal L one B. Right. So you change that. And then so leave the leave the what do you call the courses out, just select the questions and then replace them. South Africa is fine. South Africa for SA, right? Okay, yeah, that's five. And then the S will be African, right? That is that is four. <laughs> then what would the TS be? Tanzania. Tanzania don't have S in there. <laughs> Alright, that will be three. The, and then now when you get to the D, if you do the D, it will replace the one with the what? The S D. So you do the S D first before the what the D. So the S D will be one. And then you come and do the D, which should be what? Two. Then the D becomes two. Are we on the same page? Rex, are we on the same page? Rex, where are you? Okay, all right. Yeah. So you realize now we've converted this things into into codes. Now, uh, when you have such codes, uh, like we said. There are various ways you can handle this type of lecture skills. Why are we doing this class is that a lot of people normally get it wrong because what they do is the tendency is for them to, after converting this one into uh, um, numbers, they take the numbers and their magnitudes as correct. Now, even though because this particular question, unlike the one that we dealt with, you realize that the three makes a meaning through sometimes, then followed by what the four that is agree, followed by the five. Then they strongly disagree. Then the first one is what strongly disagree and then agree. So the ratings make a meaning, all right. Do you, do you get it? Now the ratings make a meaning, all right. For this one, the ratings make a meaning. But still, there is a problem if you try to take categorical variables and then uh, operate them as though they are continuous variables. Um, so there are various forms and ways you can deal with such such um, data and. We found out that there are about four forms that we can deal with it. We can either use the mean system, we can use the median system, we can use the quartile systems, or we can use what are cumulative percentage systems. So we're going to quickly go through all those things very fast and then we'll move on with that. Today's lecture is supposed to be faster than the other days. Unfortunately, uh, two new incomers that will be difficult for you to follow so we will try as much as possible to limit the damage so that you don't say you won't come again <laughs> computer what <laughs> okay <laughs> all right <laughs> Why you do your Like some
<laughs> Why? Today his attitude has changed. <laughs> Reg, what's the secret? <laughs> Women can change things. Women can change things. <laughs> he has even taken his shirt. That's serious. <laughs> Okay, so we hope next week when we come here with prevalence of malaria, it will be a but you need to give them the education before you give the assignment. That's fair, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Um, what we're saying is that there are four ways to uh, deal with such legged skills. Uh, you can find them in all of our in publications. So this is one of the publications. Uh, Abdullah uh, Rubash. I hope I'm mentioning the name well. Uh, Raj, am I mentioning it well? No, 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 no. Uh, Raj, this is it. Arubash. Okay. I have to twist my tongue a little before I can get it. Right. So, if you have, if you have this one like this, if you have this one like this, um, you realize it giving you the performance criteria that you can use to assess legged skills. So this one is just like one of the works that, that this one is PES, that is SES. Okay, this one is the professional experience survey. Uh, so that is how the quality assurance for the school, uh, quality management for the school should have been. Uh, there's a course in three parts or four, basically. There's a course evaluation survey. There is the mid-term evaluation, that is the uh, student experience survey. And then there is the professional experience survey. That is when the students have finished and gone out. They try to go and assess and see whether the tuition that you are giving here, how relevant is it to the person on the field? Yeah, so this is a PEN one. That is a professional experience survey. So that is, that is relevant. So um, unfortunately, uh, for hours now, there's on, I don't know whether they are on hold or it's going to be. I uh, used to be involved, but uh, let's continue with our class so that we don't venture into areas. Without. All right. So you realize that the mean system, they have given the cutoffs. They are saying that if you do the mean and the person get 3.6 above, that is high quality. Okay. So in this particular case, it will mean that our quality system is good. Um, I can see 25 still instead of 30 <laughs> at the top there. Um, <laughs> is it only by a fucking or? Uh, because somebody is wearing coats <laughs> today, he chooses to to put the uh, air condition at a certain stage. All right, let's go. Time is really running. Right. So let's go through the mean system. So with the mean system, this is how you're going to attempt to do that work. So with the mean system, what it says is that whichever score that a person get, you sum it up, you divide by the number of questions, and that gives you the average of the person's score. So if you are in SL, all that we need to do, anytime we want to do any calculations with SL, once we put in an equal to, it becomes a calculator. So all that we need to do is to sum and divide. Or otherwise, we could just go here and then take... Uh, what do you call it? The average, the function, one of the functions that is there. So one of the functions here is the average. So we can just take the average from here. As you can see, the average, the function keys are here. There are more functions even if you click on them. But this time we are interested in the average and it's here. So we just click on average. And if you click on average, this is what you get. 
So we now go and select the ones that you need to average. That is, we are averaging question one to question what? Four. Okay, so you just click hold and then you come here, you release, and then you just click on OK. So you realize that at this place, all the distance are there. So you see four, four, one, one. Yeah, and that is being averaged. So it is from C two to uh, what do you call it? F two. You just click on OK. And the average is that. So the average is 25, uh, 2.5. For the first respondent, the average is 2.5. For this particular domain, it's 2.5. Hello? Yeah. Right. So if you do this, since you are in SL, you don't need to do it for each of the uh, cells or each respondent. All that you need to do is to just, you see, when you look at this side, you realize that there is a a small chip at the box. There's a small chip at the box. You just put your cursor there. Anytime you put a cursor there, it becomes a plus. Here. Hold and then pull it down. Once you are pulling it down, the formula is being taken to the other side. And once you release, it means you have done the calculation for all of them. So with the autofill, you do the averages at just one time. So this one becomes the average and you know the average is the same as the mean. So that is the mean score. This is the mean score. That is the mean score. Right. So with this mean score, then what happens is that you can also, don't forget that anytime you click on this one, you realize the formula is still there. You do yourself a lot of good if you take the formula out. And the way to take the formula out is to copy the whole thing like this and then paste special. Paste it at the same place. And this time around, you paste only the values. So this means the values. Only the values. Now, if you are using an older version, that means you have to click paste special and then go and select only values. So now, if I click on this, you see, you don't see anything again. You only see values. Hello? Uh, right. So first, ladies, I think the emphasis is for you. So please, some of the things you have to be watching the screen. Yeah. So you have only the values. And then if you select them like this, you can easily go and then uh, what do you call it? Do the decimal place. You realize that for the cutoff that we are do using, you realize that we are only interested in what one decimal place. So in SL, you can use this things here: decrease and increase. Uh, what do we? The decimal place. So if you click on one of these, so if you click here. You can increase the decimal place if you click, click here you put it at one so now we know everybody has one decimal place as we have so now the thing is that now we know everybody's average now how do we group them into the categories as we saw in the paper by our rubbish as i have been told um, so how do we do those categories again we can use one of the functions that we've learned in SL, two of them actually that we've learned in SL to do that. So quickly, I'm going to do the first one, and then Dominic is going to do the the ones that follows within this 20 minutes. We are just recalling. So, so um, in order to do this, you can easily use the filter function. So you click on the cell that you want to filter. You go back to the filter function, which is here. That is sort and filter. You click on sort and filter and then you choose filter so you choose filter and then once you choose filter you have an arrow on top of whatever you want to filter so you click on that arrow now and you have a lot of numbers all the numbers have been checked but you are going to use the number filter to do the filtering what are these numbers yeah these numbers are the ones that's course in the okay. in the cells so you are using the number filter to do the filtering. So what you do is that you just click on this number. And our first score is that we want those that had 3.6 and what? Above. 
So we come to those that are greater than or equal to what? 3.6. So we click on that one like this. So we have greater than 3 or equal to 3.6. Once we click on OK. Now, you realize that the, this thing is showing only the people that have that number. Are we there? Yes. It's showing us only the people that have that particular what grades. So you realize from the first one, he has what? 4.3. The last one has what? 3.8. So those are the only people that are. So these are the guys that have scored the performance as what? Excellent or high quality. So we can choose to put something beside them. Like let's say E for excellent. And then we just pull it down to cover where they are. So once we've done this, we can move on to the next one. So we have categorized these guys into a rating. They rated it as what? Excellent. Do we all agree? Good. Then we move on to the next one. The same sort of thing. We go back to this side. Yeah. Um, after um, writing the greater than or equal to 3.6, do we add any other thing? No, the first one is greater than or equal to 3.6. That is what you do. Then the second one now is where we have to be greater than or equal to three, uh, two point six, but it should be less than three point six. So this time around again, we come to use greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to two point six, but here when you come down here, you choose another operation that it should be less than. It should be less than what three. 0.6 that will give you the second column if you look it on the paper that is the group the second group of people acceptable performance which we can say if the performance is accepted that that is good good so in this particular case we can also use g to represent them we just pull all the way down so we are just using the g to represent the category that is our guys who had 2.6 and above it fell from 2.6 to 3.5. Then the last group, if you look at the paper, the last group is supposed to be less than, that is those here, they are supposed to be less than what? 2.5, 2.6, right? So we just go into this one like this. And then what we do is to go to this side and then do a less than. 2.6 so those people are having an unacceptable performance they are written as an unacceptable performance so we put let's say poor there and then we just move it up for them so by virtue of just doing this one quickly we have been able to push this into the individual we cannot go and release our filter we go to this side and the other we clear the filter or we just click on filter again and the filter is released so now you can see that let's say the mean categories so mean cats you can see these ones are now mean categories so you can look at the categories against each of them so you see this guy had poor and he had 25 uh, 2.5 sorry can you see the next person had what excellent his average was what 4.1 4.3 if you move on to the next one, you realize that 1.8, that is poor. So you can see that we have categorized them into the individual groups. Yeah. In the course of doing the calculations, mm -hmm. I forgot to let me the groups that are excellent, mm -hmm. but I did the others. Go back and resort. And resort. Just, yeah, fit, just sort for that. So, but then I sorted it out big. Before going to the next one, to do yeah, it doesn't matter where you start, you can even start from the middle. So now, if you go back and then filter again, all the people with the E will come back. So, you just put the E there. No, you can do it as several. I can choose to change my E, I can just come back here right now and then say that I am filtering it again. I filter. And then I say all the people who are above the 3.6.
you see they have come as E. I don't like them as E again. I like them as Q. <coughs> and when I do that, it should take over. It will just it's just presenting that category of people to you. And you put whatever you want there. So if you didn't put anything there, that place should be blank. So you can refilter that and redo that. That should not give you problems at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those who are here already, is anybody finding difficulties with this? Okay. <laughs> all right. So I will shift quickly and then uh, pay attention as uh, we do the same thing, but this time we are using the if function and Dominic will take care of that quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, we are just recording what we have done. <laughs> okay, so 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 the freshers should pay attention. This this could be a little bit tricky if you don't get. All right, good evening. So we're trying to recapture what we did yesterday. I hope today we don't look into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and this time round, instead of using the filter function, we're going to use the if function, okay? And in Excel, like we know, anytime you type equal to sign, it means you are starting what? A formula. A formula, okay? So now we want to start the if formula, so we type if. And anytime you begin your formula, you bring what? You open a bracket. So if I want to do summation, if um, my equal to sign, then sum, then I open a bracket. But this time I want to do what if. So after the if, you open your bracket. Okay. Now I want to tell Excel that whenever Excel sees a number in cell J2, that is where we have our, our, um, our categories. So whenever you see a number or a figure in cell G, G2, G2, which is greater than or equal to 3.6, make the person get excellent. Do you understand it? Okay. Okay, so whenever you see G2 greater than or equal to, normally greater than or equal to is written as greater than or equal to, isn't it, Mathematic, uh, mathematicians? But we don't have that on our computer. So we're going to use the greater than symbol and then the equal to symbol. So if cell G2 is greater than or equal to 3.6, then give the person excellent and in excel then we use what comma so comma then excellent but excel when it comes to formula or calculation it re recognizes any figures okay so excel will not see excellent so we have to put excellent in what inverted commas so Or our E again. Is it okay? So this is the first argument. We can write as many arguments as we have, but this one we have only three arguments. When it is greater than six, three point six. When it is greater than two point six, but less than three point six, and when it is less than two point six. Do you understand it? So the second argument is when Excel sees any figure in cell G2 which is greater than or equal to 2.6 that person should have what good again we will start with if open a bracket then our cell so you can click in cell G2 or you type G2 greater than or equal to 2.6 then then it's our comma. Then what? Good. If someone scores 2.6 or more, then good. So we will use G for good. All right. So whenever you have your arguments in the if function, it always ends with what we call the value if false. So if all these conditions are not satisfied, then the person should have a poor, a poor mark. Do you understand it? Uh, so this time I will not go with if. The if goes for the value if true. 
So if you are ending with the value if false, you only bring your comma then, then you conclude that the person should have what a poor or p. Are you here? Yeah. Okay. Now you realize that any time we started with an if, we open the bracket. So we will close as many brackets as we opened. How many brackets did you open? One, two. We opened two. So we will close <laughs> twice. And just be obs let, let's observe the, the color of the, the color indicators of the brackets. I'm doing it again. What color do we see? Red. And it corresponds with the last bracket we opened. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so let's close it again. What do we see? Black. And it corresponds with the first one we opened. Okay, so after this, so it means that once we get to black, we shouldn't go on. So if we opened 20 black, um, brackets, the last one will always be black. Are you here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if you don't even remember, just keep on. Keep on doing it to get the black one. Are, are we here? Yes. So once we get our last bracket, we enter. So let's enter. Okay, so we get P for the first one. Are you there? Yes. Then we do our autofill. <laughs> let's do our autofill. Are you there? Yes. Okay, so you realize that we get the same categories for our me. Please, are you following? Can we do it? Yes, sir. Yes. The Vim cam. <laughs> All right. All right. Since it is a recap, I think we'll just... Now, I'm asking if I had done for a third argument. Okay. A third argument. Okay. Instead of ending with a four in brackets. Uh, okay. And I had done an if again, and then my cross would be if to, if um, G2 is less than 2.6, then four, before I come to close. Yes. Would it have worked? Yes, what he's trying to say is that... Yes. That the if false, yes. if he has actually put an if there. Okay, so let's try. Once we are here, let's try. Yeah, so do it on the next, next, next column. Okay, so we are doing another thing. You can even copy the whole thing there, and then, and then and another it. thing. Another thing is, if you want to do the same thing, you can copy the formula, but you always have to change the cell. The cell numbers. Do you understand it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now the cells has changed to H. Meanwhile, we are using G. G. So, the cell has so uh, let me first change my cell. My cell. Okay. So this one, we want to use if. Okay. So you haven't changed your cell well. H. Your cell is supposed to be G. And I repeated, I repeated the H again. Yeah. And then G2, yeah. Okay. So now instead of. Instead of just G, typing G, yeah. So I'll say if. That should come after the 6 and another G. I don't get you. That should come after the G. So if. Oh, okay, okay, no, no, that's okay. Okay, so if control, uh -huh. if G2 uh -huh. is greater than, so no, you need less, less than, than, okay, less than 2.6, yeah. then P. Uh -huh. Rex, is it what you, you meant? Yes. yes. Okay, so yeah. now we've introduced another bracket. So you realize that the first initial bracket, which was black, has changed. has changed, so we have to end it. Yeah. Okay. We got the same. Thing. We got the same thing. Uh, so so let's auto fill and see. It's the same thing. The same thing. So it means we can introduce the if. Uh huh. But uh, the argument, the last argument, is it if. If uh, if G2 okay, so time time to rest. We we know that even whether I put it at the.
at the end or at the bottom, it will still work, at right? Least, at least his trash was necessary. Yeah, <laughs> the trash was necessary. Yeah. So, so since it's eight o'clock, uh, we'll call it a day here with the recalls that we're doing. God willing, tomorrow we'll continue. Uh, but before we leave, uh, this is the N Gigo series lecture series like we have been telling you um uh we are saying that no garbage in no garbage out um no garbage in no garbage out and this is the unscripted version of of n gigo so we see you again god willing tomorrow um we'll continue and then we see whether we'll do the recap or we'll continue with others. <laughs> All right. Um, tomorrow, though, I don't know, but um, I copied the softwares for you. Uh, Adam, have you shared them? Or you kept them? Love with the ladies. Uh, yeah. So I want you to install, install the softwares. SPSS. Graphpad. Graphpad Prism, at least for now. SPSS Graphpad Graph. Prism. Um, the nickname for Graph, Graphpad is what? Graphpad. <laughs> Graphpad. <laughs> so what do we do with the leads? Okay, okay. Are you all at the evidence site? You are at ICT. ICT. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Is it back then? Yeah. Really set, set, set. Look at what? Look at this. And look at that. And look at that. The last one. The last calculation we did with the impact. Yeah. Is it the same as the mean? No, the, the mean is the score we got. But I wanted to interpret the mean. So that's we wanted to use it to select the people. So the if function was just like the filtering. Yes, to categorize them. Because what they do is they still categorization. Yeah. Yeah. No, in that this is this is you setting up your instrument and then deciding on which ones you're making as domain. I've dealt with the instrument before, that's why I can easily pick and up like this. It's, 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 about the it's about telling the story, so you decide which story you want to tell. So you can put all of them together and even say facility. That's up to you. Uh -huh, you can interpret it any way you want to do. That's up to you. So which of, whichever way that you want to do it. So for a questionnaire that you are setting out, as part of the development and others, but if you are setting up a questionnaire, you should know that you are looking for certain domains, certain things. Not necessarily because you want to know something about library. Then you just, just go and say, aha, uh -huh, is the library okay for you? <laughs> then the person say yes and no. No, but I should be able to prove the library using facets of the library that you know may be needed. Like, for example, the time it opens and the time it closes, whether you get helps when you go to that place, whether the available materials that you want are available there. Yeah. So you can look at the individual inputs, but all of them goes to analyze, assess the what the library. So what is the total what we are doing now is the total this thing if you take the library, it will be the total rating for the library. But the individual individual inputs will also tell you something as to where the problems are. Uh -huh. So, for example, look at the one we are talking about as freshman's, uh, what do you call it, uh, freshman's experience. Uh -huh. you, you realize that uh, there is some about whether the school is visible enough. There is some about the, uh, what do you call the enrollment procedure. There is one about uh, 